Right, we can get started. Uh, I have already started recording, and so welcome to the second uh, lecture of week seven. The last time we were uh, ending with this, uh, with proving this small, this kind of equality, and uh, this is. This is something that um, we have not done just for fun or because it is particularly important. It is because of the fact that it is going to be used uh, in what comes next uh, in an exercise. Um, before going on, I would like to make a short recap of what we have done last time and of what where we are. So um, it is like that. It's not that we have done so much uh, from the point of view of content, uh, we have essentially introduced the notion of vector spaces, and then we have introduced vectors as functions from an index set to a set of scalars. We have seen that uh, uh, we have introduced the notion of basis, of canonical basis. If we have seen that uh, in the canonical basis, vectors have a special representation namely the vector which is obtained through a function small v is just a linear combination of this function with the canonical basis vector. This is an identity that was called the characterizing equation, if I remember correctly. Then next, we introduced linear transformations from vector spaces. And notice that here, the set of the scalar is the same, it is unchanged by the transformation. So the only thing that changes in the transformation is the dimension of the vector space. And we have seen that because of linearity, the action of F on an arbitrary vector can be described as a linear combination of the components of that vector times the composition of uh, F with the basis vectors. So that was, that was an important uh, observation. And then what we have done is to introduce two operation, a transposition for matrices and the matrix vector multiplication, an operation that takes a matrix, a matching vector and returns a new vector. And we have defined this operation in such a way that the result of a linear transformation on an arbitrary vector x, so this is a vector, can be described by the multiplication of a matrix with that vector, where this matrix is just the transpose or the transposition of f following e, of f applied to the uh, canonical basis vectors. So this is this matrix, we call it M, or perhaps it should be called M index F because it's a matrix associated to the linear transformation F. So this is more or less what we have done during the last uh, lecture as a short recap. So uh, there are a number of perhaps obvious questions and some have been raised uh, in the chat last time. Again, I apologize for not having been able to following what was going on in the chat. I, I, I have now the chat open on my screen. Uh, in spite of the fact that it's a little bit cluttered, perhaps I hope that I, I will be able to do a little bit better today. Uh, we will see. Um, anyway, what I wanted to say that there are some natural questions that, that rise from what we have done. So first of all, so one question is whether we can express the results of applying a linear transformation F to a vector, uh, which is not uh, whose components or whose uh, components are not expressed in terms of the canonical basis. And uh, uh, I think this is a reasonable question. And the answer is yes, of course we can do that. So if X is a linear combination, of uh, uh, a function given the representation of that vector x and of some basis vector b. And if f is linear, then we can push f through the representation as usual. And we end up with uh, a matrix associated 
to that linear transformation F, which is the transposition of F following B. So that's, that's not a problem, but of course we do not have this characterizing equation, which is very useful uh, at, because it gives us this very simple representation of the, the uh, coordinates of the vector are just its components. Uh, there was another interesting question. So why, why we do not, so why do we represent vectors as function? Why not, for instance, using lists? So this is, this is a very interesting question and there are however many answers to this question. Uh, I think we will see one a little bit later when we go through examples. Um, but perhaps one obvious question is the following. So we, we could do, we could define like a vector on a set of scalars to be just a list of those scalars. And then it shouldn't be difficult to, uh, to construct an instance of uh, uh, of list of scalars as uh, uh, inhabitants of a vector space. So for instance, we could define the multiplication, uh, the scaling with a scalar S uh, on a list, it would be just something like perhaps map uh, S times uh, on V or something like that. That's not a problem, but the problem is that we are losing a lot of information. You see, for instance, we had that the matrix vector multiplication had this type. And this type contained a lot of information about the dimension of the matrix and the dimension of the vector it acts upon. So this was a matrix with G prime rows, uh, with the G columns, it was taking a vector uh, with G rows and uh, giving back a vector uh, um, so of length G prime. So if we would use instead a list based representation, then, you know, a matrix of scalars would be just a list of lists like here. And the matrix vector multiplication would be something that takes a, a list of lists of type scalar, a vector, a list of scalars. So this would be vector S. Not very informative, not very informative. So besides being more general for reason that have already been discussed by Patrick up to a certain extent, uh, the usage of function is more informative. So this is the reason why we're using function. Okay, so that was more or less, uh, if we had written this in a language with dependent types, would it be nicer to use list instead? So yeah, this is a very good question. Uh, yes, in a certain sense, uh, uh, we, do have, we do have a data structure uh, in dependently typed languages that represent lists of a fixed length. And in that language, it might be, it might be that uh, uh, using a list-based representation or in fact, a vector-based representation, there is a data type, which is something like vect uh, n a to represent a vector of elements of type A of length n independently type languages. And for instance, in C++, you have polymorphism over integers, and you also have all these nice ways of uh, uh, representing the constraint of matrix vector multiplication. But still there are other problems. So here, for instance, we have made no assumption about the finiteness or even the enumerability of these indexes in the general settings. For certain computations, they have to be finite or they have to be enumerable. But for the general representation, we haven't made any assumptions. And so that when, in a certain sense, this kind of representation independently type languages, this is isomorphic to functions from fin n to a which is more or less what we have done with this index G. So in fact, it's not very different. So it, it has a name that uh, 
if you want uh, uh, refers to vectors, the data type has a name that refers to vectors. It has this index n, but this index n, we have to think it as characterizing a function from fin n to a, and then we are exactly in the same situation that we have now, where we have said that vector uh, vector s g is just isomorphic to g to s. Okay, so let's get started with the new stuff because there is a lot of things to do today. Um, matrix vector multiplication. It has been also introduced as an infix operator. So the idea is that M times V is just a matrix vector multiplication of M and V, right? Uh, written as an infix operator. And then there is this observation. So if we take the left session section of the uh, of the matrix vector multiplication, and you should think about the type of this operator. This is like a linear. This is a transformation. This is something that maps like vector S G to vector S G prime. So it has the same type of our F. And then the idea is, if we, take, if we take F to be equal to M times, what is the matrix associated to F? What is MF? And, and surprise, surprise, MF is equal to M. And this is what you are required to show in this exercise 7.9. And uh, this is expressed in a little bit, uh, um, well, uh, <laughs> there is there are like two steps what I want to say. So the exercise 7.9 is about proving this identity. And proving this identity is not difficult. Uh, I uh, recommend that uh, you make yourself clear what are the types involved in this identity as usual. But otherwise the derivation is quite uh, quite trivial and uh, it relies on this identity that we have discussed last time and I've started with this time and that's the reason why we looked we we, we proved that identity last week uh, last last uh, in the last lecture so this is something that is going to be an ingredient for completing this proof but then the question is okay so does this really mean that the matrix associated to the linear transformation M times is M. And uh, this is what, uh, um, so this is what uh, is easy to show in fact. So the matrix associated to M times is the transposition of M times applied to the uh, canonical base vectors. And this in fact turns out to be equal to M. So in fact, this identity here is used, um, is used uh, in this proof. And this proof, is in fact uh, a proof of the statement that the matrix associated to M times is indeed M. Uh, there, is, there is an interesting step here. So this final step is just eta conversion. This is lambda, lambda X, FX is equal F. But there is the, this all but last step, the step that goes from, wait a moment, let me use the highlighter. The step that goes from here to here, that uh, uh, I have to refresh, sorry. So this step from here to here requires some kind of justification, which is the one which is missing. And, uh, um, and it's a kind of funny property in a sense. So I, I've put it explicitly, you know, this final step here, Wait a moment, ballpoint pen. So going from here to there 
requires to prove that for every V, for every vector, it is the case that the vector construct with the function V bank is equal to V. So uh, you see, this is, this, is, this is the result that we are using in order to justify this step. So the vector construct constructed with mg prime bank, mg prime is a vector, is in fact mg prime. And the proof is trivial. It is just one step, but I recommend that you just look at it and that you think about the justification for this step. So there is only one justification, which is right. And uh, it's a nice small exercise. It's not so important, but I just wanted to point it out because of the fact that uh, we would like to, you know, uh, try in equational reasoning to justify every single step. So that's the idea of, uh, uh, of equational reasoning. Uh, let's move on, however, there is an extra, a little bit of an extra exercise that I had prepared or an extra discussion, but since this, this is extra and we have so many things to do, I'm going to skip it in order to uh, proceed. Before the end of this 7.2 uh, section, there are two more exercises and just uh, um, a, 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 an analysis of a special case, a special case in which the index set is a singleton. That's, that's not a problem, but we should perhaps discuss these two exercises a little bit. Uh, as I said, I, I'm going to put in this second lecture a special emphasis on exercises, also because we are moving towards these applications. So, uh, right. So here they are introducing, uh, matrix matrix multiplication and to make the things a little bit more difficult mat matrix matrix multiplication is also a kind of infix operator overloaded infix operator but uh, uh, i have uh, i have uh, decided to uh, clean it up it a little bit for you so uh, instead of using an overloaded uh, symbol, I'm using just two asterisks for matrix matrix multiplication. So the idea is the following, that this operation, which we are not defining, it is not even implemented uh, in, the, in the Haskell code, is defined in order to ensure a homomorphism uh, from, let's say, this binary operation to function composition. So the idea is that uh, uh, we, we assume or we take for granted that this binary operation is defined in such a way that the matrix matrix multiplication between M and M prime, when applied to some vector, is equal to the composition between the application of M and the application of M prime. And the, uh, so your obligation is to work out the types which are involved in this definition and to fill in uh, what are the two components of the uh, predicate H, H2 that describe this isomorphism. So what are the set? Uh, what, is, what is the binary operation on the uh, domain? Of this isomorph of, of this homomorphism, and then uh, um, and then make sure that you understand uh, this idea in terms of types. So, could you repeat how the bank function works? Yes, the bank function. So, if you have uh, if you have a vector uh, v, which is banked, and it is applied to an index i. This is just V applied to I. So very good question. But let me erase it for the moment. Uh, right, so this is one exercise. And as usual, uh, you are asked to 
sort out, oops, sorry, to make sure that you are confident with the type of all these operations. And then that you can answer the question of what is the homomorphism here and between which sets, as I was saying. So now there is this other exercise, which is 7.11, which in which you are required to show that now this matrix matrix multiplication is associative. So uh, this is clear what it means, no? So the associative means that if we are multiplying A and B first and then multiply it with C, we get the same result as multiplying A with the matrix matrix multiplication of B and C. And, uh, so this is what you are required to show, no? And that means that uh, for every for every vector v, the result uh, of the left hand side is equal to the result of the right hand side. So, but the twist here is the fact that you cannot prove this result by using a definition of matrix matrix multiplication, because this has not been defined. Uh, and so the question is how to prove that. And uh, it, it's a nice result. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, the only thing that you know about the matrix matrix multiplication is that it fulfills H2 of something. And this is what you are supposed to use for exercise 7.11. Okay, back to the text. Uh, as I was saying, the rest of this section 7.2 is just the analysis of a special case in which uh, uh, G is equal to the singleton um, type, uh, the type that only contains one element. Uh, I have just expanded this discussion a little bit in the notes. I'm going to upload the notes to the GitHub repository this afternoon. I think that it shouldn't be a problem for you to read this, this bit. And if you have problems, uh, get in touch. By the way, before we, can go, we go on, let me just uh, uh, make a short break of recordings.